if one does. Uh, if you're a pastor, ex-pastor, Pastor John and others who here have been in the leadership in other churches, and it's all polished, and, and actually I could do it. I mean, we've got it on the system. We've got 21 slides or so, you know, polished up, ready to go, ready to roll. But, but about a week ago, I really, uh, I woke up in the middle of the night, as, as sometimes happens, and felt the Lord was giving me something else to say. So you've got a bit of a choice this morning, really. You can either have, you can either have polished 21 slides all neatly done, uh, which is really all on Ephesians 4, and you can find it on the system if you want to go online and find it. Uh, or you can have uh, unprepared three slides with very little on them. And I hadn't quite decided this morning which one to do, so I just thrown the slides up on the system with Chris, and he's waiting for a command. He's going, okay. Oh, you always do it. So there you go. For the first time in West Ham Vineyard's history, you have a choice. You, know, you can either have 21 slides long, it's going to be about half for 25 minutes, or you have completely unknown and unprepared talk. Yeah. <laughs> first, hands up, who wants the first one? <laughs> Okay, you've got the second one. Happy New Year! <laughs> That's slide number one. Happy New Year to you. I hope you've all had a great start to New Year. I had a bit of a strange start because I was uh, a bit rough. I had to put my drug and all my medication had to go up before Christmas, so I was slightly wiped out. I only got here on Christmas morning. So I felt slightly disconnected from things, but it's, so it's a bit awkward. But back today, I'm back in church, I'm singing worship songs to God, and I just feel like an iPad or a phone. Look up Luke 5. Luke 5. This is one of those great stories from the New Testament about the life of Jesus. Uh, we have four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, which give us the life of Christ in, from different perspectives, from different people writing. Are we going to wait for the children? Are uh, no, the little no. ones going to come in? They're, they're, they're coming in. Oh, they're here. Oh, yeah. They're here. Okay. Yeah, they're here. Don't worry, carry on. Yeah. Okay, I did have words with Sue and she really wanted to make sure that they were all here. Go on, let's give them a minute just to bring Come the on, children Sue. in. Yeah. It was a period when I was here um, at the Christmas celebrations and the power service and the wonderful thing in the afternoon and all of that. I just felt an incredible sense of gratitude to God, really. I looked around and Chris and I had had nothing to do with organising any of it. And I just thought, this is incredible, really, what you guys basically had achieved for Christmas. But also just over the last years, as gradually we've taken steps further and further back and have handed things on to other people. And um, I just feel so grateful to God as to, to what he has done. And for us, this has really been... For this, for this particular church has been a journey of 15 years. Uh, we, we, um, we've been in pastoral ministry for 35 years, and um, but the last 15 years has been the story of West Suffolk Vineyard because um, at that National Leaders Conference, which takes place at the end of January, 15 years ago, we uh, there was a, a call um, during the ministry to say that there were some people there. Actually, there were how many? Six? Six couples who were on the staff of Vineyard Churches who God was calling to leave that church and to plant another church. And you probably haven't even told your senior to us. You're all part of the family and uh, we just love being with you. And we're so grateful that God has enabled us to stay, really, after we hand on the leadership. I mean, that is a privilege to us. Because many pastors have to leave and they leave all their friends and all those people. So as Chris said, we won't be here for, around for a little bit, but we will be re-engaging and be part of the congregation. And we are so looking forward to that. When we moved here, sorry, not when we moved here, when we've been going for about a year or so, we said to ourselves, when will we know the church is planted? Oh, that journey teaching us, isn't he? Constantly teaching us more and more so that we grow to be more and more like him. The founder of the Vineyard Movement, John Boomba, who has now sadly died, um, but one of the things he said is, I want to grow up before I grow old. And that's my constant prayer, that I want to continually grow and continually learn from him and to become more and more like him. So we're on a journey. We're on a journey as a church. There's so much more we can do. 
you know, our mission statement is, is changing hearts, changing lives, changing the world. It's not us who does that, is it? It's the Lord, it's Jesus. But we have a part to play in that. Each one of us, every single person could be involved in that. And the journey goes on. This is just a little staging post. It's like having a little rest, a little look at what's been going on, a little look to the future, a little change, and then we move on and we carry on changing hearts. And we read that out and we pray for them. And after we've commissioned them up, I've read this out, I'm going to invite our staff who are present this morning and our leaders to come and, and bless them as they begin a new chapter for our church here. So, here we go. Mark and Louise, you've been called by God to work as senior pastors at West Upper Vineyard Church within the wider family of the vineyard and the servants and shepherds among the people of Bury St Edmunds and the surrounding area of West Suffolk. You must set the Lord Jesus, the Good Shepherd, the Chief Shepherd, always before you as the pattern and model of your calling, caring for the people God commits to your charge. You are to proclaim the word of the Lord, to preach and demonstrate the good news of the kingdom and to call men and women to submit to the King Jesus in repentance and faith. You are to heal the sick, to cast out demons, to feed the hungry, to look after orphans and widows, to demonstrate Christ's love for the poor by loving them, touching their lives and meeting their needs as the Lord gives you grace. You are to lead the people in worship and prayer, to fast and intercede for them, to offer them love, mercy, acceptance and healing. You are to teach and encourage them by word and example, to bless them in the name of the Lord. In the name of our Lord and Master, I remind you of the greatness of the trust now committed to your charge, about which you've been taught and trained in preparation for this ministry. You are to be messengers, watchmen, and stewards of the Lord. You are to teach, to admonish, to correct, to rebuke, and to feed the Lord's family. You are to train God's people for the work of ministry, so they are equipped to serve the living God in a variety of places and ways. Always remember with profound gratitude that the treasure entrusted to you is Christ's own flock, bought through the shedding of his blood on the cross. Remember that the congregation whom you are to gather and serve are one with him. They are his body. Serve them with joy. Build them up in their faith. And do all in your power to bring them to loving, consecrated, costly obedience to Christ. You cannot bear the weight of this privilege and responsibility in your own strength, but only by the grace and power of God. So each day, ask the Lord earnestly and humbly to fill you with his spirit, to enlarge and enlighten your understanding of the scriptures so that you may be stronger and more mature in your ministry as you fashion your lives and those of your people on the word of God. Ask him to give you direction and wisdom from on high as you lead the people of God. Mark and Louise, I know full well that long ago you began to weigh and ponder all this and that both of you are fully determined by the grace of God to give yourselves wholly to this work and to devote your best powers of mind and spirit in order to fulfill your calling. So let me end this letter with words from Paul in 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my dear brother and sister, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. And the letter is signed with our love in Christ, Chris and Maggie, London and South East Regional Leaders, who I have to say have to approve of the pastors, and I do. <laughs> let's pray to you, shall we? Um, let's, have, let's have the staff up here. We've got the staff somewhere. Yes, they appear to that. How wonderful. 
these are the guys who lovingly give of themselves in serving us here. We're very grateful to you all. Let's just gather around as I pray and bless them for the rest of the year. Father, we pray today for one thing, which is the power of your spirit to come and to bless them and fill them with your grace today. They don't deserve it, none of us deserve it, but they are expectant of your presence, and we pray for them. We pray that you make up for their weaknesses and bless and empower them in their strengths. And we pray they will take this church on through another few chapters of its life. And they'll do so faithfully and with the support of the congregation here. Let's, um, let's extend our hands, shall we, just so that everyone is involved in this. Pour your spirit out, Father, we pray. Mark and Louise, we commission you to take on the leadership of this church. And we ask, Holy Spirit, that you will come and fill them and equip them for the work you have for them. Bless them, Lord. It's only in your strength that they can do any of this. And we ask that you will come and fill them again now. Fill them with your spirit, Lord. Give them everything they need. Can we have some of the leaders up now? Some of you who lead ministries in the church. We've actually got 90 or so leaders of ministries. There's probably not a lot of room here, but some of you come up. If you'd like to come up, just come and lay hands on there. That's a sign, really, that you're involved with this, too. This is uh, not just something that Chris and Maggie are doing, something we're, we're all doing as a church today. There we go. There you go. Anyone who feels that the Lord calls them to come up, whether you're a leader or not, come on. Pray for them. Those who run all the small groups. Any children who would like to come? Where's their family? Martha, will you come? And let's pray for you. And Eva. Where's Jack? He's in India. Has he gone back to uni? No, he's in India. Oh, he's in India, that's right. And Tom. Let's, let's come around these guys, too. More of your spirit, Father. Just, just pray out your prayers out loud so they can hear it. see the Spirit of God resting on people. I can see the Spirit all over this group of leaders as they bless your new senior pastors. And sometimes, uh, have a look, you open your eyes and you can look and you see sort of heat shimmer just over someone's head. That's where that funny halo thing in stained glass windows comes from, that shimmer thing that we sometimes see. And sometimes you can see people just weeping. It's not because they're, they're unhappy, it's simply that God does something, just with, as he did with Peter. And he took him on and blessed him for the following day. So, you know, when we pray for people, expect to see God at work, and, and he is, all over the place. This is John, who's just got a word from the Lord for us. What is it for, for them? Right over there now, John. Um, during the worship, um, the Lord was just reminding me about um, when Joshua took on the leadership of Israel, and um, he had to he had to move on. And um, the words were actually, "Moses is dead." And of course, Chris and Maggie are not dead. Far, far from it. But it's, it's the principle that it was a new beginning, it was a new era, and Joshua was to take the people into the promises that God had made, and 
I believe that's what's going to happen for you in time. So, Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. And we thank you, Father, that you're faithful to every generation. Thank you, Father, for Mark and Louise. We thank you for their faithfulness. We thank you for their loyalty, just as Joshua was loyal uh, to Moses and to Miriam, of course. And so we thank you for that. And we ask you now, Father, that you would release them fully into this, not just role, but this moving on to uh, step into all the promises that have been made to the church here, that they will see the fulfillment of that. So we, we, we bless you. We, we're happy to bless you. And to bless you with the Father's presence, his love. To bless you with the Lord Jesus, his wisdom and know-how. And to bless you with the presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen. To all the people say, Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Now, if you'd like uh, to receive prayer today, there's an opportunity for you too. If you want to respond to anything the Lord's been saying to you this morning, do please come up for ministry, which will be led, I believe, by Mr. Wilcox. Yes, Philip is going to lead the ministry time. So let's stand, shall we?